Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we'll be doing the third part of my minor power tier list, and we'll be covering a C and F tier. We've completed S tier, A tier, and B tier, and just kind of walking through again, these are the S tier cards. These are the cards that are pretty much always a card you want to consider, regardless of the spirit. A tier becomes a little bit more restrictive, but these cards generally on most spirits tend to be very powerful. Then we have B tier. It is more restrictive than A tier. Um, pretty solid cards. You, you'll find most spirits can make use of these, but there will be some cases where you just can't really draft the card. C tier and F tier. These are the tiers where I think that the cards tend to be pretty niche. Um, and F tier, the cards being just pretty much bad. You should never really take these cards. So with that said, let's get started at C tier. And we have this column here, and I believe this is my utility column. And there it is. We have Reaching Grasp. That's that first card here in C, in, uh, C tier. Um, once again, these cards are in no particular order. I just kind of put them in, um, lined them up in columns. Um, this card is just, it's just bad. Uh, zero cost for Sun. Uh, I mean, so it's a zero, zero cost with three elements, but the range boost tends to not be necessary if players are playing um, at a high level. Um, at that high level, usually players are able to recognize where their presence needs to go and can kind of solve all of their problems without this range boost. Um, there are some cases where the range boost is going to help, but it tends to just be very rare. And then the, the problem is, is it's usually just off element. Um, unless you're in these elements, you're not really going to want this card. So I think the only spirit that would want this would be like Sunbright Whirlwind as a sun air. But then that spirit already has uh, a range boosting card. It's so like looking up here, like sun air, like Thunder Speaker is sun air. But Thunder Speaker is not going to have the card plays to play a card like this. I think you might be able to make an argument for River as a uh, sun water card and then rivers massive flooding would have um would significant increase in range but like i feel there's plenty of other zero cost cards all up in here that you would rather take over a reaching grasp it's not a terrible card but i find myself i think i've I, i've taken this card maybe less than like one percent of seeing it i very rarely pick this card up um on the spirits that i play Okay, so at the the next column, it looks like it's Fast Disruption. And we have Steam Vents, Visions, and Delusions. Um, Steam Vents might actually be a, a B-tier card. I'm, I'm not sure yet. It is a quad element, and it's a Destroy and Explorer at zero range. If you have three Earth, you get to destroy a town. And because it's a Destroy effect, it can get through um, England. The reason why it's here and not up in B-tier is... Um, I'm just trying to think what was the reason. Oh, it's well, so like compared to like Disorienting and Razor, right? These still disrupt the build, but they, they leave you a wild. Same thing with Ever Twisting Trail and then Strong Constant Currents is a zero cost card. This costs one and um, it doesn't give something extra. Now it could still be B tier, but um, I'm going to have it C tier for now. Visions, very similar to Steam Vents, but instead of actually just outright solving a land or a um, Instead of just uh, dis like completely removing the invader, you're pushing the invader. Now it does come with a fear, but really what puts it in C tier is these elements. Uh, Moon Fire is one of the worst elemental combinations in the game. Um, so a lot of times when you're playing this card, you're opting to play off element, which um, is pretty bad on top of the effect being like okay. Like it's a B tier effect with bad elements. So Delusions of Danger. Very similar to um, the cards up here, except you just don't have the extra bonus. Like, if you're playing Disorienting, you get an Explorer push plus a Wilds. Disorienting, you have um, less range, but you just get that Explorer push. Now, it does have that option uh, as to give you two fear and has slightly better elements because Sun, Moon, Air tends to be very good elements for Forgets. But a lot of times, this card, um, I find it to be just a, a C tier card. I pretty much never play it. Um, I think the only time I, I pick up this card is if I'm playing Fractured Days, and that's a Sun, Moon, Air, but playing this off element is usually pretty bad. The next column is the Dahan Movement column, and we have Call to Tend. I have this card here. It's acting as a Blight Removal, as well as just uh, Dahan uh, Mobility. The elements are okay. Um, I think the problem that I have with it is it must target a land with Dahan, so it makes this card 
as a blight removal effect very um very very restrictive and then the pushing i guess is fine because you, you're going to target a land from dahan anyway if you're going to push but usually since it's if you're paying one energy to move to han and the blight removal tends to not be as good it ends up in c tier if you compare it to a card like rights which is fast to han movement instead of slow and then it also comes with this build skip or you can compare it to birds cry warning once again fast to han movement or like the han uh invulnerability um so you could see, like, just comparing it to some of the other cards, it's just significantly worse. Like, even called called a Ferocity, this is slow to Han movement, just like called Attend, but it costs one less, and it also has this ability to kind of push a town explorer. So, this is this is definitely a solid C tier card. The next category is our Blight Removal effect, and we have Teeming Rivers and Uncanny Melting. I find these two to be just worse Blight Removal effects than the ones up here purifying voracious and renewing rain and the main reason is is these cards they tend to have um either an alternative effect like adding a uh, an additive effect like adding a wilds or in this case doing damage and then this one just has four elements um it's teeming rivers it has four elements so oh, i guess it is kind of similar to purifying flame so maybe there's an argument that i might be valuing flame a little bit higher oh but flame has um the air which tends to be a better element than uh teeming rivers and when I say better, I mean um, for the event forgets. Um, there's certain events in the deck that will require players to um, to pay essentially elements. Here's the air one uh, to avoid a negative effect. And I'll make a video on this at some point. But air is one of those events that if you cannot pay for this, it's just very punishing because it's deck acceleration. So any card that has air. Um, if you don't see yourself, if you don't like the draft of four cards that you have, just drafting a card that has air could help you out because you can just forget it for this card if it ever comes up. So the problem with Teeming Rivers is the Blight Removal. Oh, this is why I have it down here in C tier. It's it's because the Blight Removal is restricted. It says the, the land has to have one Blight in order to remove it. And um, you also have this uh, option to add Beasts. The Beast add is... it's kind of nice i've used it a couple times but like a spirit like fangs can't afford to be playing a card like this um especially when well yeah, fangs might pick it up now that i think about it, it is blight removal I'm trying to think if there's any other spirits that would want this i know I've, I've picked it up a couple times on roots i mean maybe you can make make an argument for a rampant no, no rampant would never want this it's too expensive and you're already stopping a lot of blight already but really the fact that you uh, in order to remove the Blight, the land only has to have one. Uh, really puts this card, or sets this card back. Uncanny Melting. Um, similar to the pro similar to the uh, the cards up here, it's a Blight removal effect. Now, this has worse elements than the ones up here, and there is no extra effect. That extra effect is just a, um, is just a fear. So, looking at the next column, it looks like this is the token column that I have. We have Choke Fungus, Shore Seas, Tormenting, and Scream Disease. We'll start with Scream Disease. I find this card to be pretty terrible. Um, I don't think I've ever picked it up. Now, maybe that could be just because it doesn't fall into the elemental combination that I usually play. But really, Air, Water, Animal tends to be a very tough elemental combination to use. I think the only spirit that can really that really wants this would be Many Minds, and even then it's one energy, which means it's pretty expensive. Um, I think Many minds would pick this up if there's a vengeance in play, but um, once again, that extra range tends to just be a little bit um, weak. And now, look at this—you're actually paying an energy to give range while reaching grasp is free. So, I think that this card with zero cost would definitely see a lot more play. But at, at it being one energy, it tends to just be pretty mediocre. Tormenting rot flies. This is a disease ad for one energy. Um, Disease, I find a lot of the disease ad cards to be just very underwhelming in the minor deck. Um, I think the devs overvalued just how good disease was. Um, so yeah, it just, it just never does enough, in my opinion. Um, sometimes I'll pick it up if it's on element, but usually it's passed up. Shore Seas, this is a Badlands Wilds, and um, you have to target a coast. It is a quad element card. I find this card to be in uh, C tier. And the main reason is because it just 
doesn't impact the board. When you're paying one energy, and, and I know a lot of these cards don't impact the board, but um, if you're paying one energy, you want to actively affect your board somehow. Like, Tormenting Rot Flies, you're adding a disease. So maybe you'll stop a building, and that might help you down the line, right? You might stop a build action. Sure Seize is more of like a combo effect. Um, you're adding that Badlands, which means you want to synergize with Badland, uh, with your uh, damage-dealing cards. But then you also add this wilds. So it's this weird, um, like the wilds you want to put in an empty land, but the badlands you want to put in a land that already has buildings. And then it has to be a coastal land. And then it costs an energy. There's just a lot of things that um, I think are holding this card back. It's probably near the top of C tier. You might be able to argue it's B tier because it is quad element. Um, the same thing with uh, Steam Vents. It being quad element can possibly put it into B tier. But for now, I have it in C tier. Choke Fungus, um, it's very similar to the other cards below. You're adding Badlands, you're adding Disease, but I think why I have it here is just that Jungle Wetland targeting restriction really limits where you can put this card. And then, um, like, even Green. Well, I mean, Green probably would possibly pick up this card. Um, because it costs one energy, it's very tough to make work on a lot of spirits that go towards that minor the minor builds. Remember, if you're moving down that bottom track, you want to be playing a lot of zero-cost cards. So if the card costs one energy, it really needs to, to do something big. And um, this card, in my opinion, doesn't. I think the only spirit I've picked this up on is like green, maybe keeper sometimes. Okay, looking at the next column, this is the fear column, it looks like. I guess it's fear. Yeah, so ter Terror Turns to Madness, it's not a bad card. It's zero cost energy, and it's usually two or three fear. Very similar to Reign of Blood or Portance. Um, I have it here because I find the elements to be worse than the B tier, uh, B tier fear cards. Like Reign of Blood, this typically is a staple on um, actually a lot of spirits, as well as uh, many minds. But what makes this card good is it's a solid three fear that you're bringing in every turn. Terror Turns to Madness decreases as the value, or as the uh, terror level goes up. And sometimes you just would rather have three straight fear, and you don't want to have the, the Strife add at terror level two. So, I tend to not use this card much. It also has worse elements. So, looking at the next one, we have Dry Wood. This is one energy, zero range, one damage, and two fear. I have this in the fear column because I think the best part about this card is it does one dam uh, it, because it has two fear. The one damage tends to be pretty underwhelming, and the wetland targeting restriction um, also sucks. Like it's double restricted, and then like I don't know, I just I don't know what they were thinking with this card. And then it's like you may spend an energy to make the card fast. It's just I don't know. There's just a lot of things that are fishy. I think it should have cost zero. Like this should have cost it zero energy. And then this should have kept everything the same. And I think it would get a lot more play. Now, it does see some play on Keeper and Wildfire just because the elements that Fire Plant is really nice. But other than that, most spirits just pass this thing up. Okay, we have, um, looks like the the niche high damage uh, miners. And we have Drought and we have Poison Dew. This is actually pretty funny because um, I just played a game uh, a six-player game. I ended up playing Poison Dew three times that game, but um, it was Russia 6, and that's the reason why this card is down here. Pretty much Russia and, ha and France, this card is amazing. But outside of that, it's a pretty, pretty bad card. So um, that is why I have it in C tier. It's just very situational. Drought, um, why do I have it here? It's very similar to Scour. Uh, you destroy three towns, and then you get to do one damage to every building. If you have three sun, you destroy a city. I have it down here and not up here is because Scour... Oh, right, because Scour destroys all explorers. So Scour has tech into France and Russia, as well as being solid into um, England and Habsburg, while Drought is just strictly only good against England, Habsburg, and um, I guess Scotland. Though there might be an argument for this being in B tier, not entirely sure. Looks like I have Disruption with Fear in the next column. We have Weep and Lands of Hunt and Embers. Um, Weep, it's... 
the, the problem with this card, is, so it's one fear per type of invader present, which means it's usually between, well, at least one fear and then one to three fear, which is very similar to here there be monsters. And then this card says you get to push up to one per blight. The fact that you have to target a land with blight really hurts this card. It also has worse elements compared to the cards up here as shadows and here there be monsters. Land of Haunts and Embers, it's a fast push with fear, but because it adds Blight, the card has to be really effective because adding Blight is just, it's not good. I mean, I know if you've watched my videos, you know I, I like to prioritize defensive abilities, but um, sometimes I'll use Blight cards, but if I use a card that's adding a Blight, then it really needs to impact the board, and uh, Haunts and Embers just doesn't do that. Um, okay, next column. Looks like we have, um, I guess, the catch-all. Okay, so gnawing root biters. This card, um, I think what really holds it back is the elements. Uh, push two towns isn't bad for zero. It's just earth animal is so niche. I don't think there's any spirit that really can fit this in their um, their kit. I think you might be able to argue many mines and fangs because of the animal. Um, maybe stone because of the earth. I've picked this up a couple times um, if I'm playing with ocean because then I can just dump towns into the ocean. But really, it's just it's just too niche. The next column, it looks like I have um, damage cards. So this is our damage. And yeah, okay, so these are our five damage cards. I have these cards here and not up in B tier. Why is that? So pull beneath, it's a one range for one damage at one energy and then you get an extra damage if the land has your presence so that means if it's a zero range it's just too restrictive um i find all of the damage cards to be a bit under costed or a bit over costed um i think they i don't know if they should cost zero but i think they should do a little bit more savage maw beasts uh similar to pull beneath it's only doing one damage at least this costs zero but the elements tend to be worse um, it also requires a sacred site, which can be pretty challenging to get. If you have the three animal, it does an extra damage. So you might be able to see value here, maybe with fangs, but it doesn't have the plant for fangs. And then with many mines, it doesn't have the air. So you really need to be, you really need to have a lot of card plays to be able to squeeze this card in. Devouring Ants is very similar to Pull Beneath. Um, it does two damage from a sacred site. Uh, well, I guess pull beneath is at a zero range is when it's doing that two damage, but um, the but with devouring ants, um, it kills the Han. It has better elements. That sun animal is huge. It's vigor elements, but just having sun makes the card very very viable. Um, when comboing with different, uh, if I could scroll out, when comboing with different majors, but so it's probably a little bit better than pull beneath. But it definitely sees less play than B tier cards. Unquenchable. I don't really understand this card. Um, it, it does a single damage to buildings. And that's it. And I think if you're not playing like Volcano or maybe Wildfire, this card just tends to be just not good enough. At least with a card like Devouring Ants or um, Savage Maw Beast or Pull Beneath, you can actually kill Explorers. So it's, it has utility there. But Unquenchable only hits buildings, so it locks it out of play into France, into Russia. Um, so I guess the the only time I think I'd play this card is if I can get the two fire, because then I can get a Badlands add. So lastly, we have Sunset Fire. This is a quad element. It's one fear, one damage, and a land. And then you may pay an extra energy to do an additional damage in an adjacent land. I think what's holding this card back is this line of text here. I do like that the card is able to hit two lands. It's very, very strong uh, in stage three where you can pay two energy to handle essentially two builds. But a lot of times, if you're playing this card, that means you're playing a spirit that's going down bottom track, which means you're not going to have energy. And if you don't have energy, you can't afford to be playing the bottom part of this card. So, okay. F tier. The final tier of the game, or final, final tier of the, the list. Uh, and these are some of the worst cards in the entire game. And we have Renewing Boon. I'm pretty sure this is the worst card in the game, or at least a contender. 
and it's sun earth plant it says choose a land where you and target spirit both have presence in that land remove a blight and target spirit may add one of their destroyed presence in solo i think this card has text in multiplayer it's just so restricted restrictive you have to choose another spirit both you and that spirit have to have presence in the same land and then you're able to remove a blight and then if that player has a destroyed presence, they bring one back. But the fact that you have to target another spirit and both presents have to be in the same land is just, it's insane. And then a lot of times the elements is just pretty, um, I mean, they're not bad elements. Um, it, it's very good on a spirit like Earth or Starlight because Earth Plant is a really good combination. But um, just it tends to be, it doesn't do anything and it costs an energy. So next column, we have the Blight Removal column and, or no, I do not have the Dahan Movement column. Where's this? I think this is in the wrong spot. Oh, no, it is. No, the Blight Removal is the next column over. Okay, Dahan Movement. So, Call to Migrate. Um, I regularly talk crap about this card. Um, it's just really bad. It's one energy to slow move Dahan. Uh, I mean, you are you are able to like set up Dahan by gathering and pushing, so you can pretty much get Dahan anywhere on your board and really jump across multiple lands. Um but it's just not good enough. It's slow to Han movement, and that's all it is. And even the elements aren't even that good. Uh, it's fire, air, animal. It just it can't fit into many shells. Um, like Call to Ferocity, you can push stuff, you get fear, you can move to Han, it costs zero. Call Call to Migrate moves to Han only, costs one. It just it's just much much worse. Um, if I'm looking to play with this card, I'm trying to think of a spirit that would want it. I don't know. I mean, fire, air makes me want to pick it up as lightning but lightning um doesn't have the energy to play this card and also doesn't really want to be moving to han because you already have a dahan movement card um maybe you might be able to make it work on thunder speaker no thunder speaker doesn't even want it because you have a left innate that moves to han as well as two cards in your starting hand that move to han um maybe maybe keeper i don't know i don't know if a spirit if you know of a spirit that really likes the card, likes this card, put it in the comments. I, I have no clue. Um, I think I've picked this up like once, once or twice. Absorb corruption, um, just like above the blight removal cards here. Um, you can choose to gather a blight or pay an extra energy to remove a blight. If you have two plant, you get to do both. The problem with this card is it's a blight removal effect for two energy. Um, and that's just not good enough. Um, now, if you if you use this card as a one energy for gathering a blight at zero range that's significantly worse than entrap which is gathering a blight in the fast that also isolates and prevents cascades so you can see it's like the gather effect is significantly stronger on entrap and that's usually what you'll be playing this card for is that gather effect because um the blight removal effect tends to just not be uh, it, it tends to be too expensive. You can't afford to pay two energy to remove a blight unless you're extremely far ahead and then it just doesn't even matter. Looking at the next column here, we have the token cards, I believe. Yes. These are some of the worst token cards in the game. Prowling Panthers. Yes, this is the worst card. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the worst card in the game. Um, one energy, a fear, and a beast add. But you have to choose Mountain or Jungle. And then if the land already has beasts, you get to destroy something. I think this card is one of the worst cards in the game because it has that fire moon, so it has that really bad elemental combination. But really, the beast spirits, so the spirits that utilize beasts, don't even want this card. And I think that just tells you how bad it is. If you look at Fangs, Fangs and many minds do not have the energy econ to be able to play this card as well as play other cards from their hand. And it doesn't even have the elements these spirits want. It doesn't have plant for Fangs, it doesn't have air for many minds. Um, it's just, yeah, pr pretty underwhelming. I think the only time I would ever want to pick up this card is if I'm playing against England and I can utilize the second line of text, but then again, it's also very restricted, restricted. It has to be a mountain jungle with beast. So, um, yeah, just not really not a good card. Um, I don't think there's any spirits in the game that want this card at this time. Next one, we have infested aquifers. It is a one energy quad element. It gets to add a disease to a mountain wetland and a fear, or if disease is present, one damage to each invader in that land. Basically, it's a one energy disease add. 
And I already said I don't like one energy disease ads, but now it's a zero range in mountain wetland. So like at least tormenting rot flies is at one end. Uh, it's at two range sands wetland or maybe um, thriving choke fungus one range jungle wetland one range coast. At least that it has that extra range here is zero range mountain wetland. Um, just not good. The, if the target land has disease, one damage to each invader, um, tends to never have text. Um, I know there was a, like a 20 something spirit game where they, you, they use this card to basically board, not board wipe, but, um, the players had used this card to basically win the game by repeating it four times in a land to kind of wipe the land out. Um, it was, that was pretty cool to see that happen, but at the same time, like, um, that game that was played was not within the con uh not within the context of spirit island rules they had exceeded six spirits and at that point um and they they had also played with multiple minor decks so um at, at that point i think um assessing this card based off that is just not something that we can reliably do flesh rot fever another one energy uh disease ad i think it's yes yeah, so it's one one range jungle sands it is quad element um, I have it here instead of, in, instead of up here, mainly because, uh, Tormenting Rot Flies can, has this, uh, ability to just tech into fear. You can, you can get between, um, usually it's three fear, but it can also get four fear. And Flesh Rot Fever just, uh, it, I mean, it's just a consistent one fear. I believe Ray, I, well, it's in F tier because Ray, who plays a lot of Vengeance, he has a Vengeance Guide. Um, I asked him about this card, and he's like, yeah, it's definitely an F tier. He even said that he even passes this card up on Vengeance a lot of time, too. So, okay, so Desiccating Winds, um, one energy, it's a Fire, Air, Earth. Um, if the land has Badlands, one damage, add a Badlands, and it has to target Mountain Sands. Um, I have this card here because usually it's just one energy to add a Badlands, but then that Badlands add is conditional. If you scope. If you go all the way up to here, where we have Seer Anger and B tier, it's zero range, unconditional Badlands add with better elements. So you can see why this card is rated so poorly. And now you might say, well, it gives you this damage effect, but then at that point, you have to be playing this card multiple times, right? You have to play it once to add the Badlands, then you have to play it again to add another Badlands and also do the damage. Um, in which case, it's just... You're, you have to play the card twice to actually start getting start gaining value from it, and I think that's just not not very good. Um, like I, I play a lot of stone. I have a stone guide. Um, I would never pick this card up on stone. Uh, it just does nothing. Um, you already have plenty of Badlands cards. I'm not sure if Volcano wants the card. It is tri element on Volcano, but Volcano already has a Badlands card, and that Badlands card that Volcano has is not. Uh, there's no conditions on it. So, okay, the last card of the video is Song of Sanctity. I have this here as like a mass explorer push, but you can also see this card as blight removal. Um, really, the problem with this card is it's a conditional push all explorers. And, so, and then if there's no explorers, you can remove a blight. Um, it's just there's too many conditions on it. I think if this, like if the card said... Like this like it's it's either you do the top or you do the bottom i can see it maybe being a c tier card because then it will it would act as a blight removal for mountain jungle but there are so many games where i'll play this card planning to use it on a empty jungle wetland uh, jungle jungle mountain only to have that land explore and then now i can no longer use this card to remove the blight and um now you might say well oh well now you're stopping the build well, the problem is if I already have buildings in that land, right? And if the land looks like this, and I'm planning to use this to remove the blight so that when this land ravages again, it's it's fine. And then it just explores. Well, now, like, I have to spend an action to remove the explorer with something in order to remove the blight. It's just it's too conditional. Um, especially when you compare it to stuff like... Uh, I'm like, um, like Teeming Rivers, where it's Sacred Site from a Mountain Jungle has one uh in order to remove the blight it has to have only one this is more conditional than that um just because 
the fact that it has to have uh, have no explorers really puts it um, puts it behind a lot of the other blight cards. So this concludes my series on the minor power tier list. Um, if you like these videos, like, subscribe for more content. If you have questions, throw them in the comments section and I'll get to you. I'll see you guys in the next video.